We're here with Brian K. Baker, another one of the executives at HeartMath Institute. Hello, Brian. Good morning. Good morning, Evan. So we've spoken with Catherine a little about how HeartMath came about, her personal story. We'd love to hear from you a little bit about how HeartMath is being implemented in the real world, the practical aspect, and what sort of results you're seeing out there. Okay, great. I'd well, love to. Um, one of the things that so impressed me about HeartMath when I was first learning about it, like 22 years ago when it was just uh, starting, was the idea of appealing to like a total broad spectrum of people. Over the last six, seven years specifically, I've been able to work with a group of people uh, that's really been inspiring to me. And, and these are people that are caregivers of an extraordinary type. These are people that are veterans. These are active duty military service members. These are people in law enforcement uh, and other first responders like firefighters and uh, paramedics. Um, probably the groups that have uh, most impressed me are the, are the people in law enforcement and the, and the service members. All right, because prior to, to working with them, I never considered them caregivers, all right? But uh, after you get to know these uh, guys and gals at a deep level, you realize, or I came to realize, that these people are very service-oriented, that the majority of them are motivated by a deep heart uh, core value of care and service for the, for the country, for the city, you know, for something that's much larger uh, than themselves. Isn't their motto to protect and serve? To protect and serve. It's a, it's a real motto. By understanding the, the body and how it works and the through the research, we've been able to develop a number of programs and, and techniques, especially, that allow people to really self-regulate. Uh, maintain our center, stay composed, but especially in the heat of the moment. I mean, you could, that could be something as simple as a traffic jam or things that are going on in staff meetings, but we also do work with law enforcement and officers who really have to be able to maintain their composure uh, when there's some pretty challenging situations that could truly be life-threatening uh, in that kind of situation. Uh, but that just gives you a little bit of an idea that our tools and techniques are being used pretty much worldwide in, in a number of contexts. It's wonderful that you mentioned the law enforcement, and it's such a hot-button issue. It's certainly in our country right now. It's emotionally charged, and it, people are concerned. What can we do if, if the cops are running scared, but then they overreact, and they got to protect themselves too? Sure. How, how are you applying your, your technology for them? Well, that's a complex situation. That's just one of many. So this is very different than like a relaxation approach to stress management or something. This is really about transforming our own emotions uh, in the moment they're occurring. So it's um, simple techniques uh, that are simple, but yet it took a lot of research and a lot of understanding to get to the simplicity. So it's complexity crunched down into to simple tools and techniques. And then we also have technology, physical technology devices that you can measure, put a little clip on your ear or your finger and measure your, your heart rhythm. It's called heart rate variability. And that allows you to much more quickly learn those tools and techniques and learn how to shift into this optimal state we call coherence, which is what where you shift into when you use these techniques properly. So it gives you a feedback tool that really helps facilitate and accelerate the learning process. You watch the news and you know a week doesn't go by where there's some media story about some interaction with you know a cop that didn't go well. What what most people don't understand is what's it like from the perspective of, oh, I'm, I'm a police officer, you know, and I'm doing this job every day. And they don't realize how little training a police officer actually receives in skills to maintain their own poise, composure, balance, and resilience. All right. Tons of training on tactical, <clears throat> you know, active shooter scenarios and, and real important stuff. A lot of money spent on, you know, all kinds of gadgets and technology, but when it comes to teaching an officer how they can maintain their composure and their poise and their resilience and their health and well-being for the long term, hasn't been a priority yet, okay? Fortunately, that's starting to change. Mm, yeah, I love the yet. It leaves right. opportunity and hope for that's the future. That's right. It's starting to change, and more and more uh, people in leadership uh, from, you know, chiefs of police, you know, on down are starting to get the message that, oh, 
we have to do more for our officers. You know, they're giving their lives. I mean, literally, not just the ones that are getting injured on the job, but after they retire, you know, their their life expectancy is very low because of the accumulated stress. You know, from the job, the divorce rates, on and on and on, that these guys and gals go through. But but there's a realization. Okay, there is more that can be done. And it's helping and them too. So it's helping them do their job better, helping protect the people that they're charged to protect, yeah. and helping themselves in the long run with their health and well-being. Oh yeah, th 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 this is a story. W one of the key things that most people in law enforcement aren't taught is how to shift and reset their physiology. All right, so person, an officer gets into some kind of a scenario. Let's say they've gone on a call where there's a uh, domestic violence situation going on. Very stressful. Something to diffuse. Yeah. Right. They leave that call. They go on to something else. And this is actually a true story. The officer goes on to another call and it's uh, suicide. The person wants to commit suicide. All right. Without going into the details, he's there for a while, you know, too long. Leaves that call and gets another call where there's this ruckus at a pool party going on, all right? So within the course of about four hours, he's got three major incidents that he's dealing with. He arrives at the third incident not having learned how to shift and really reset his physiological baseline back to something that's like stable. After the first two. After the first yeah. two, and, it, and he loses his composure almost immediately. Whole thing's captured on video he does a few stupid things like people will do mm -hmm. when they're, you know, overamped, overstressed. And they're on the news. <laughs> and they're on the news and he loses his job and he, he probably uh, will never work in law enforcement again. This guy was like an eight year veteran of the military. Uh, he was like officer of the year in the community. And to me, this is a perfect example of how we as a community, we set up our officers to fail like mm. that, but we don't have to do that. And the good news is that's starting to change, okay? And, and we can teach them skills to be able to self-regulate and bring themselves back into a state of mental, emotional, and physical balance. So the next situation they're going into, it's from a much more calm, composed perspective, and it has a much higher ratio of success. Beautiful. So we've talked about bringing this technology and the training to be able to self-regulate and have the resilience to be able to walk into the next situation with a renewed sense of calm and right. having a handle on things. And how about you, you alluded to that education element to it as well. Uh, what about that? Like, Do we need to get the heart math technology in every school in the world and <laughs> just get this well, going and create, help create that shift? Yeah, I, I mean, I think so whether it's the, the technology or just the practicing of the techniques. There, I, I want to give you one story, if I can, because we were talking about, well, how does this really impact the lives of, say, a, a cop, you know, day to day? So um, this, was a, this was published in a study, uh, of a study that was done in San Diego, and, and, this, and part of the study was an, evalu was an evaluation uh, by the officers, and this officer said, I, tell, I, I want to share this one story. He said, I was on a, uh, a call recently, I pulled somebody over. Guy ended up getting out of the car, all right? And he took, which is bad, you know, in the first place. Can be threatening to the officer. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is this guy and then, coming and out then, uh, And then he, he, what he faced the officer instead of like this, which gives the officer peace of mind because, you know, it's like you can't do much like this. He, 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 he faced the officer like this. So the officer immediately called for backup. All right, he said, but before he did that, as he was doing that, he took one breath, all right, and he shifted his cell himself immediately into composure. He called for backup, and he dealt with the situation, all right. He said, when his captain arrived, the captain thought he was joking when he put out the call for backup because every other time he called for backup, he literally screamed for backup yeah. and was upset for like eight hours after. We love to look at the practical applications and the takeaways of things, and we've talked about uh, law enforcement, you know, implementation already and the potential it holds for them. And uh, we discussed earlier about 
refugees right. in Middle Eastern countries, in, in, uh, you know, Syrian refugees in particular. I understand that uh, the heart math technology is alive and well over there and being uh, implemented. What's it doing? Well, very much so. One of our trainers, um, Majd is his name, um, is training especially families and children. And the, the stories and the pictures that are coming out of that work are just so heart touching. I mean, when you see the faces of these young children, you know, with the war behind them, I mean, literally, in the pictures. And then they, how they look after they've gone through the, this, these programs and this training. I mean, just, you can just see the difference. Uh, their body language, their face, and you can almost feel the, the shift that it's made for them. And one of the big problems that he was telling me that these kids have is uh, wetting the bed at night because of all the stress and the anxiety. And it, that's almost completely uh, resolved when they learn to use these techniques. Now, he's not just working with the kids, but also the mothers and the parents. Just been, uh, there's so many stories of, of, of transformational uh, changes that have happened in people's lives, even in the middle of something like the Syrian war. When this technology was developed, was curbing bedwetting an intention no, not or not just an un, unexpected byproduct? Well, it, it, I mean, that certainly wasn't, we didn't develop heart math to, for that, of course not. <laughs> but it was just a, it was a, it was an indication of the stress that these children are under, right? Because these, these are some of these are older kids, and it's just, that's a symptom that, that why they, they're coming to him a lot of times is, is that would be the symptom. One of the things that he's able to resolve with them. But I mean, that's just a, such a small picture of what's really going on in, in uh, those people's lives and how it's changing. Right. So, so we started working uh, with uh, service members uh, in the Navy. Uh, they had, uh, the Navy had been given a mission called Detainee Ops which was basically guarding uh, all the prisoners in Iraq, Afghanistan, and the one in Guantanamo Bay. And they just kind of volunteered, uh, quote, volunteered, you know, sailors from all over, the, all over the world to come into this mission, and they would train them up and they'd send them over to one of these prisons, and there they were in one of the worst, you know, jobs in the world. And it turned out to be the most stressful job in the, in the entire Navy. Right. It wasn't being a submarine person. It wasn't being, uh, you know, a radar operator. It was being a detainee ops person in these in these prisons. So shortly after that happened, they came to us and asked us for some help in increasing the resilience of the of the men and women that were in these very challenging uh, jobs. So <coughs> we worked with them. Wonderful people. Uh, some of the most care most caring people I ever met were the people in the, in the command and leadership people uh, in the Navy. And we modified a program that we had for school teachers uh, to make it culturally appropriate for service members and then started rolling it out as these people were, uh, before they were deploying, you know, uh, on their mission. Um, and the, the stories we got back, um, you know, the, the, some of these stories, they'll, they'll make a grown man cry you know, in terms of how the, the impact of these folks being able to learn skills to really self-regulate their mental, emotional, physical system. And indeed, the language uh, that they like and that we embrace was to take charge of their mental, emotional, physical system so that they have the energy to be who they, you know, really are. In their heart in their heart yeah. yeah I like to just call it managing our transmissions what we're putting out there into the social ether yeah it really feels like there's no end to the potential impact benefits and overall achievement of this global coherence that we all want to see <coughs> from the the techniques and tools being developed right here in Santa Cruz mountains yeah. at heart math Institute well I'm super inspired by all that you've shared and all we've learned in our time oh, well, here. Great talking with you. No, pleasure. We'd like to see you again and keep tabs on what you guys are up to and how, what a difference it's making out there in the world. All right, thank you. Yeah, we'd like to end all our interviews with a hug. All right.